Not one nurse here likes George Strait or Garth. In, I gotta bring in my Beat Farmer CD, man. You always say that, Second and then you never bring record. in your CD. Hey, Brock? Yeah, what you got? I got a guy who got shot about six times, and they're gonna bring him in in about five minutes, okay? All right. He's uh, still alive, but we'll see. Okay. Hey, you know we got a multiple gunshot one yes, coming up? Yes, we're ready. <clears throat> Hey, Dave, what you got? Yeah, I got Multiple gunshot wounds, neck, Thank chest. You. He's got good breath on bilaterally, arm, penis, left side. So I'm going to go ahead and get him intubated. Yeah. Yeah. Can you get a cuff on him, please? Yeah, what you need, Doc? We need a chest right away. Yeah. Hey, what's your name? He's got two. Is, rest, is he breathing? Open up a tray, Trey, please. Breathing. Go ahead. Let's, let's go. You want to let's get, let's get some fluids on this side, OK? Hey guys, have we sent blood on him yet? Can we get some blood on this side? Do you cycle the blood pressure, please? It's cycling, Charlie, right. where's the chest you okay. I got it right now. See, 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 I don't have a chest. I got it. Girl, oh. 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 everyone just chill, OK? Chill, chill, chill. 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 gentlemen, the President of the United States. Others may hate you, but those who hate you don't win unless you hate them. And then you destroy yourself. Think twice before he leaks again, won't he? Yeah. <laughs> Be looking in his toilet bowl every time he pulls the chain. <laughs> From Hollywood Pictures comes Oliver Stone's new feature film, Nixon. Academy Award winner Sir Anthony Hopkins stars as the 37th President of the United States, Richard Milhouse Nixon, who reached the White House through sheer guts and determination, only to become, perhaps, the most tragic figure in American history. Nixon, of course, is the American patron saint of darkness. <laughs> he was a dark and glum man, it seemed to me. His interior life was glum. Gloomy Gus, they called him as a kid. That was his nickname in school. Oh, what's Nixon doing here? Oh, no. He thinks he can make it. He was a bad football player, but he stayed on the team for four years. I mean, the guy had tenacity. That's one thing he had. He never gave up. Hello, I'm Charles Carroll. Welcome to a new series called This I Believe. I always enjoyed doing pieces that meant something beyond selling a movie or a TV show. This was a pretty noble project. 20 or so five minute interstitials plus a half hour special with the luminary shown in the open I created over at Match Frame. And this was based on Edward R. Murrow's 50s era show and had the great Charles Kuralt as host. Edward R. Murrow probably was the most respected journalist of our time. Murrow always believed that ordinary people were at the emotional center of any story. When introducing this, I believe, he said, I've never yet heard a man express what he believed in a fashion that failed to interest me. Edward R. Murrow's This I Believe was broadcast on more than 350 stations and was carried internationally by Voice of America. It was translated into six languages. At one point, it was the most listened to program in the world. I believe that the study of chimpanzees while it has taught us a great deal about the place of chimpanzees in nature, has taught us an equal amount about humans' place in nature. It's made us a little humble. It certainly made me a little humble because I realize that I'm not, and that the human race is not, the only rational thinking being on the planet and that we're not the only creatures capable of altruism and self-sacrifice. Of all questions, this is the one that I must take most seriously. For what I believe defines me. Belief is the very name of my being. I believe, therefore I am. To believe is to accept and to affirm, and I accept and affirm the human condition in relation to all that is other than human. 
I believe that my spirit is a sacred trust. I believe that I must know as much of life in all of its expressions as my hungry heart will allow. I believe that my own soul is the object of my best quest and that in the questing I shall earn dignity and death, joy and justice, purpose and peace. With families who might go for three, four generations and never finish high school or even think seriously about finishing high school, they move into a new home that they themselves have helped build. And in two weeks, they're deciding which college their kids will attend. And for the first time, instead of being a burden on society, they are an asset and they have an element of self-respect and an element of uh, confidence that they've never had before. Because in many people's lives, even small successes are rare, almost non-existent. And to do something that really succeeds, that you can look at, is a glorious experience. We live on a planet, a tiny planet, that goes around a humdrum sun. That's one of 400 billion suns that make up the Milky Way galaxy, which is one of a hundred billion other galaxies. This is a magnificent, glorious vista to my mind. Some people find it lonely. Some people find it depressing because it displaces humans from the center of the universe. They say that, that it makes human life meaningless. If we want meaning in our lives, we know what to do. We can judge meaning and significance by the courage of our questions, by the depth of our answers, and by the necessity to care for one another. This is what I believe. You don't mind if I just move this a little, just out of the way? Just yeah, you can move that. Thank I saw you on the show the other day. I clicked on the show and you were naked. What are you doing? I was not naked. So nice. what's been happening to all my children? Well, if you win this game, maybe I'll tell you. Thank you. I might have to tell you. You might have to tell me soon. <laughs> what, and I'm supposed to spill my guts to you? You may have whiskers. You're still just my baby brat brother. Just an offer, take it or leave it. He's pretty much just a college kid and uh, doing the college thing and just trying to find his place in this town, make friends and maybe some other type of friends also. If I could get away with having a man of honor instead of maid of honor, I'd pick Matt. Whoa, that's high praise. So make sure you leave him a big tip. She's just enough of a bad girl where people still find her interesting to watch, but she's the kind of bad girl that's really bad only to other bad characters, so that makes her good. I think that they'll go on many adventures together and lots of dancing. <laughs> I think we will dance our way into bed. <laughs> can I say that? Kelly's always on. You can, I don't even have to say anything. I just look at her and she, she'll make me laugh. The stories, oh my gosh, the stories from South Jersey. Oh, this is nice. Sabotage. <laughs> Sabotage. This man's gonna be hot. It's going to be very, very hot. Well, what happens? Do That's they live happily ever after, or don't they? That's for you to find out, ain't it? Truth or death? Jeremy, suck it. Kelly is like something you've never seen before. My last lover, Jacques, the French sailor. We met on the top of speech out of saint tropez Save it, save it. Everything is like a game, and that's fun to her. You, me, on Dorian, all living under the same roof. I can hardly wait. <laughs> I get to say all these nasty things and people not really do anything about it. So it's cool. It was really hot. So we ripped off our clothes and jumped into the fountain just to cool off. I mean, it was incredible. <sighs> What's it like playing such a nice guy? I like it. It's nice. I mean, I'm a nice guy. It's not difficult. I wouldn't mind playing a villain. I think I'm, I'm lying. No, Kelly, I know you're lying. I think they're going to share something so intense that It'll just, it'll blow them both away. Honestly, you think I'm joking. They're laughing at me. Up next, an infomercial. For a new client we would come to know very well in the next couple of years. They are moments we'll never forget. The pageantry, 
The competition, the human dramas, the treasured moments of the modern Olympic era. And now for a limited time, DreamWorks Television and the U.S. Olympic Committee present The Olympiad's Greatest Moments, the official 100th anniversary eight-volume video library by award winner Bud Greenspan. The complete collection, more than 100 of the most memorable stories in the history of the Summer Games. Go behind the scenes as Nadia Comaneci captures the gold and wins our hearts. Enjoy the moving story of the runner whose father gave him the strength to finish the race when all was lost. Learn the amazing true story behind Mark Spitz's seven gold medals. And find out why one man's last place finish becomes a stirring triumph of the human spirit. Best of all, this incredible eight-volume video library can be yours for only four monthly payments of $39.95. When the Wrightwood Partners decided to split, I went with the one who was connected with CBS, who formed a new production company called Triage Entertainment. When we got the fifth sneak peek, I was both the producer as well as the editor. In fact, I had my Avid in the online bay and was going from chair to chair. Pretty fun. On Wednesday nights this fall, CBS presents a new kind of crime story. What would you do for your partner, Cam? Easy streets has a lot to do with protecting your own, looking out for what's yours. Your parole officer's gonna tell you not to associate with Fallon. You tell him we're the only people you can trust. I find it a fascinating story, epic in scope, operatic. Do I look like I'm afraid of dying? I want to know who you told. No! My character seems to be fearless about the pursuit of the truth, whatever the truth is, as long as he knows what it is. Somebody killed my partner. I want to know who. And what if that person is me? Then I'm going to kill you. The whole theme of it was to try to make it close to me as possible. <laughs> yeah. I thought this only happened on my birthday. Uh. <laughs> First time my kids saw the kissing scene, you know, they were, they were liked and then they saw me kissing. And I, that's not mommy. That's not mommy. And I'm just wondering, God, what is this doing to these kids? Oh! <laughs> what are you doing here? What are you doing here? We live here. First time my wife saw the kissing scene, I had to have a CBS executive right next to her showing her how much money I was making right there. That's how much she made on that kiss. OK. Also new on Friday night. The name of the show is Mr. And Mrs. Smith. Uh, I play a spy. Who are you? Janitor. You? Secretary. As soon as they meet, she has this instant connection with him. Sex. It has a way of keeping people from thinking clearly. The notion of the show is that we're going to travel to different cities, different countries, and continue our spying but all the while trying to find out more and more about each other as our relationship grows. Can we talk? What about? We can start with what you're doing in there. Oh, this is my home. I uh, live here. Someone's stealing your home. It's a timeshare. People have found you know, the show to be very sexy, and, and, and that's all going to work for us, I think. We're just starting to click. <laughs> click? You call this clicking? It's ridiculous how fun it is. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Friday nights, this fall on CBS. Familiar faces, new comedies, new dramas. It's an exciting new season this fall. Welcome home to CBS. So it was 1996, and the first half of my career in Hollywood drew to a close. Possibilities seemed pretty bright. But there were a few changes in the air, like Triage buying three of its own habits, new ones, and relegating mine to a um, kind of as-needed basis, which was OK, because I had made my money and then some. I brought the other habit home to the house I bought in the hills above the Sunset Strip and was able to do some side jobs and pick up a little extra cash. But really, the best work of my career was still ahead, and so were some unforeseen problems. But for the time being, I was on top of the world and living the dream.